Hi, my name is uh, Gudmeet Manku. This is part 9 of a video series on heart disease. The focus of this video is, uh, is it true that uh, worldwide, in parts of Asia, Africa, South America, as people got more affluent, uh, did we start consuming a diet that was lower and lower in fiber? <laughs> Let's see. Okay, there's a Wikipedia article called Diseases of Affluence. In uh, North India, we might choose to call it Amiron Ki Bimariya. These are the dietary factors this article has identified. And let's simplify it, okay? Higher consumption of oil and sugar. So oils are fat extracts. Instead of oil, we could have chosen nuts and seeds. Uh, sugars, refined sugars. Instead of uh, sugars, we could have chosen like sugar cane or an actual beet, okay? So increased consumption of these extracts. Animal foods instead of plant foods. Increase in the refined grains instead of whole grains. Uh, increase in ultra-processed foods instead of, you know, buying fresh ingredients and cooking in our own kitchen at home, okay? Now, is it true that the more we do these four things, our food becomes lower and lower in fiber? Okay, that is what we will explore in this video. Now, is it also true that it becomes higher in fat? Uh, that is something we'll cover in a separate video. So let's focus on the fiber aspects of it, okay? So, number one, Animal products have zero fiber, okay? So meat, fish, eggs, uh, milk, and dairy products like uh, ghee, chaach, buttermilk, uh, paneer, khoya, mawa, cream, cheese, uh, these products do not have any fiber at all, okay? Fiber is found exclusively in plant foods, whole grains, beans, nuts and seeds, and fruits and vegetables, okay? Second point, extracts like oils and refined sugars, they have zero fiber. Okay, these are oils of fat extracts, refined sugars are carbohydrate extracts. So just to fortify the point, we can compare soybean oil with actual soybeans. Okay, soybean oil is just fat, it's a fat extract, but soybeans actually have some protein, some carbohydrates. They also have a lot of micronutrients, including fiber, which is lost when we converted soybeans to soybean oil. Okay, now the fine grains are, have some fiber, but they have much less fiber as compared to whole grains, okay? Let's walk through some examples. But before that, let's study what is a whole grain and what is a refined grain. So whole grain has three parts, bran, germ, and the endosperm. The endosperm is uh, the carbohydrate-rich, sweet inner portion of a whole grain. And many of us seek to consume the endosperm-rich part of the grain because it's sweeter and also improves shelf life of products which are endosperm-rich. <laughs> but in the process of uh, eliminating or reducing bran and germ, what do we lose? Well, we lose a lot of micronutrients, okay, including fiber. So how much fiber loss is incurred? Well, you can look here. This is white rice is one third the fiber as compared with brown rice. In the wheat world, uh, the fine wheat flour has a quarter of fiber as compared to whole wheat flour, okay? So in the wheat world, we also have uh, semolina, like suji, rava. Uh, these are also polished to some extent. These are not whole grains. Bran and germ gets removed to some extent, okay? So somebody like me who wants to eat bran and germ also, along with the endosperm, I would go and buy actual whole grains, okay? In the rice world, there is white rice, which is obtained by taking brown rice and uh, polishing it. And then white rice can be converted to like poha, murmura, white crackers, rice crackers, and so on. Okay. In the millet world, there is a concept called hulled versus pearled. The hulled versions of millets have more bran and germ. So somebody like me would go and prefer the hulled versions. Okay. So fourth point. There is something called ultra-processed foods. It's a UPF. Okay. Uh, they are often, not always, often fiber deficient. Now, it is a significant problem that many UPFs are fiber deficient that uh, doctors like Dr. Gregor uh, have devised rules like this, like a five is to one fiber rule, okay? We will not go into the rule, but all I'm saying is uh, this concern is uh, motivating doctors to devise rules so that if we choose to have ultra processed foods, then we could remember this rule, inspect the nutrition label and apply the rule and then decide, hmm, is this fiber rich or not, <laughs> okay? So if we do these four things, okay, what happens? Uh, oil and sugar, as I told you, macronutrient extracts, zero fiber, okay? Animal products have zero fiber. The fine grains uh, have much less fiber than the whole grains. And ultra-processed foods are often, not always, often fiber deficient. So, as you can see, the more we do these four things, you know, the lower the fiber intake. Every little step is taking us in that direction, you know, less and less fiber. 
it's also good to remember fiber is found exclusively in plants okay but if we take a plant and we start doing extractions right for example we extract uh, fats out of it or we extract uh, carbohydrates out of it you know then we get oils and refined sugars there is no fiber in the extracts we can also extract you know the the endosperm rich part of a whole grain okay now it's it's a sort of extract you know we polished uh, some part of the grain away in that process we lose fiber okay and ultra processed foods are often made of refined grains they have oils in them they have sugars in them uh, they might also have some milk products in them you know ultra processed foods are actually made of these three four things quite often not always but quite often and when we compose anything from these three four substances you know it's not a fiber rich food so that is what's going on and <laughs> you see okay so let's look at the role of fiber in the indian diet with respect to cardiovascular risk okay let's see here is a fascinating study published in 2018 okay this study compared india and us food plates somebody got this amazing idea let's compare these two countries from dietary risks with respect to cardiovascular disease okay so this is 1990 2000 2010 2016 okay and let's focus on the dietary risk factors the red bars are uh, india and the gray ones are united states so there is something amazing going on i was very uh, surprised and uh, i hope uh, you are also surprised look what's going on look at these red bars they are almost twice uh, as big as the gray bars here right my interpretation is you know the uh, the risk due to our diet is two times with respect to cardiovascular disease as compared with the diet in USA <laughs> so why am i surprised okay so i am originally from india but i have spent uh, several decades now uh, in USA um so in USA the average food system you know is critiqued in nutrition research papers uh, you can kind of see what's going on there is uh, almost a 40% obesity rate in USA uh, and a few years ago it was pretty high it must be 25% or so i'm estimating in 2016 so imagine a country where so many ultra processed foods are being consumed there is high obesity rates you know uh, indian food plates are worse than that <laughs> okay it's it's not easy to understand why this is happening and we need nutrition insights to grasp uh, results like this okay now the same a research paper actually shares what is going on according to them okay they say there were similar dietary risks in india and the us and they are highlighting a few you know the first few are low intake of fruits and vegetables okay and low intake of nuts okay and other things going on but look at this low intake of fiber and whole grains uh, low intake of whole grains accounted for more disease in india what does this mean okay my interpretation is you know there are some common risk factors but there is this excess risk factor this extra length of this red colored uh, bar here what can we attribute it to well this paper is attributing it to low intake of fiber and low intake of whole grains low intake of whole grains means we are eating refined grains okay <laughs> instead of whole grains these are the two important factors okay uh, so i made this video are indian food plates fiber deficient uh, i walk uh, through many different points uh, step by step and you might be interested in uh, watching this one okay so another perspective heart disease in india and the, uh, in africa and the role of fiber okay so here's a survey paper 1997 it's on coronary heart disease and it's on africa as a whole okay there are lots of interesting uh, sentences in the summary so what i did was uh, i copied them so that they are more visible so this is an exact copy of uh, the summary from the research paper that i showed you coronary heart disease is near absent in rural areas of africa and uh, in some cases if you if you go deeper and study the paper some places it was zero <laughs> like none at all it's very surprising some parts of africa was measured to have zero and generally speaking all over africa near absent it's like a rare health condition coronary heart disease you know due to which uh, we can potentially drop dead due to heart attacks that condition <laughs> okay now the paper says among town dwellers okay intakes of food have changed so what has happened fat intake has increased and you know the fiber containing foods have reduced So do you know what's happening? High fat, low fiber. Okay, and then they're saying, you know, with these uh, nutrition transitions, uh, they are uh, worried. You know, urban Africans might start getting the same high mortality rates due to coronary heart disease, which is uh, currently experienced by the Afro Americans. Who are the Afro Americans? Okay, people of uh, African origin who are now in uh, USA, and in USA. it's not just uh, uh, the the african americans everybody has high heart disease rates okay you can look at asian indians hispanic population pick any sub population everybody has chd going on okay so, so 
basically they're saying, uh, unfortunately, they're saying, as long as Africa remains impoverished, a major rise in CSD is unlikely. It's a very sad statement. <laughs> Let's see what they're saying. They're saying, basically, in rural Africa, many parts, you know, they have zero, <laughs> some parts have zero heart disease. Um, and generally speaking, heart disease is rare. And it's true for many different non-communicable diseases, not just heart disease. And as urbanization is happening, you know, the NCDs are going up. And the food system, because of affluence, is becoming high fat, low fiber. And they're saying, you know, as long as we don't become affluent, we'll be protected of these diseases. <laughs> okay. That is one viewpoint. And the viewpoint is, as we urbanize, as we modernize, we may choose to follow the food system that we used to follow. Okay, uh, We may choose to follow a low-fat, high-fiber system. It's a difficult choice, but, you know, we could. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's introduce another angle to this. Let's look at the dietary guidelines by, you know, uh, uh, important organizations. Uh, I'll show you which ones. And what is the role of plant foods in them? This is USTA Food Plate, Canadian Food Guide, and ACLM Food Plate. ACLM is American College of Lifestyle Medicine. <laughs> so I made an entire video on this theme, uh, comparing these food plates, and what is the role of plants in all three. So you can watch this video for details, but I'll give you a sketch of an idea in this video. You know, three out of four parts, okay, three quarters of this uh, big plate here is common to all three. It is fruits and vegetables and grains, okay? And uh, in, in a couple of them, it's called whole grains. All right. The beverage is dairy. It becomes water in the Canadian Food Guide. It becomes water in ACLM. The last one is protein. In the US system, there are three healthy eating patterns. One of them is healthy vegetarian pattern. And we have a choice. We may choose to follow any of the three. Within the healthy vegetarian pattern, there's a provision for choosing uh, soy as the dairy. Uh, so, which means we can use a plant-based um, uh, product here. And for protein, we can make it plant-only if we choose to. Okay, so there's a provision for a plant-only food plate. <laughs> Canadian Food Guide says, choose proteins from plants more often. In the protein section, they're saying more and more plants. ACLM says, just eat plants. <laughs> okay, this is the food plate. It's plant-only. Now, with this background, let's see what do AHA guidelines say, American Heart Association. Okay, and what is the role of fiber? Now, the reason I, I'm showing this after showing you those three guidelines is that uh, uh, this is a textual guideline, okay? We can't visualize it, okay? But look at the text. The f uh, guideline number two, uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, and they say plenty of, okay? Plenty of fruits and vegetables. And the guideline number three says uh, whole grains instead of refined grains. Guideline number four, fascinating. It says mostly protein from plants. So now, you know, nutrition science as a whole, uh, uh, it's, it's progressing and you can you can kind of see what all these different organizations are debating about with other differences what are the common things so that's what i'm trying to highlight okay and this is the uh, dietary guidelines by aha okay now same uh, dietary guidelines same publication they have a section called desirable nutrient profile the very first one is rich in fiber okay what is the text dietary fiber found in plant foods and they they're listing all the plant foods let's read this consistently inversely associated with lower risk of a bunch of these uh, heart related uh, problems okay <laughs> what is what is inversely associated mean it means the more fiber we consume the less the chances of getting these diseases like uh, coronary uh, like, like heart disease and all these uh, card cardiovascular <laughs> cardiometabolic diseases and all these metabolic syndromes like okay so that is what they're saying. More the fiber, less the disease risk. Okay, it's a statement in uh, AHA guidelines. Okay, a couple of years prior to that, here's another publication, American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology. And you know, this is clinical practice guidelines. This is not uh, like one or two doctors saying something. These are organizations. They're clinical practice guidelines. What do they say? Now they have, uh, uh, they, they're saying two of the diets are okay with them and it's a very long complicated sentence and they have mixed two diets here. So they say plant-based diet and Mediterranean diet and then they list what it has. But look at the role of vegetable fiber. They are highlighting it, okay? It has fiber in it. Consistently been associated with lower risk of all-cause mortality. What is all-cause mortality, okay? It means uh, uh, if we eat more fiber, we live longer lives. So in other words, if we reduce our fiber intake, we live shorter lives. That is what all-cause mortality means, okay? Uh, uh, consistently associated uh, positive correlation. That's what this means, okay? Now, in India, we have a fascinating food system called Nature Cure or Naturopathy, which is uh, protected and promoted by Ayush Ministry, Government of India. 
uh, it is centered around kand mool phal phul pati pani which is actually uh, connected to vana prastha stage of life you know when people go live in a forest and you can kind of see it as a peaceful forest dwellers food system people who are pursuing meditation spiritual journeys you know if if they live far away from uh, the humdrum of city life and even villages away from them what do they do in a forest they subsist on uh, fruits and vegetables primarily kand mool phal phul pati pani they don't kill animals they don't kill uh, uh, insects and birds okay they are pursuing meditation and peacefulness in the modern world we don't have to live like this we can have grains and beans and nuts and seeds and herbs and spices okay this whole composite food system is the foundation of naturopathy nature cure mahatma gandhi was a huge fan of this okay and that's why naturopathy day is remembered after something mahatma gandhi did in 1945 these food groups in nature cure naturopathy and the food groups in aclms whole food plant based guidelines are the same <laughs> that is the amazing thing so you know different cultures uh, are arriving at the same essential principles for constructing top notch food plates that is what i am seeing okay and it, it brings me joy to share all these interconnections with you these food plates are extremely fiber rich you know they are also extremely heart healthy and this entire video series is on heart health so okay that's how it is now let's come back to our diseases of affluence story which i started off with you know there's this trend which has led to this uh, the, the, this term called disease of affluence uh, low ncds and a few specific ncds were zero in the rural and so called primitive uh, places in many regions of uh, the world in, in many parts of asia africa and um, uh, south americas modernization is resulting in high ncds um, and this is in nutrition transition okay now if we have a diet low in fiber we put ourselves at risk of things like constipation but many other conditions if you do this year after year decade after decade heart disease is only one of them okay uh, so as a modern urban dweller um, can i reduce my risk for all these uh, ncds by saying i'm not going to do these four things okay is that possible which is yes there is a american college of lifestyle medicines whole food plant based uh, food plate which has no oils no sugar it doesn't have any animal foods it has plant foods only no refined grains it has whole grains it doesn't have ultra processed foods we eat whole foods okay not uh, ultra processed foods by doing so our diet becomes supremely fiber rich okay it becomes uh, fiber rich and that's the idea okay so as a modern urban dweller we may choose to follow you know the the food habits of rural and so called primitive populations in which there are research papers demonstrating uh, low non communicable disease rate low heart disease rate and some of them had zero heart disease okay that is the big picture going on okay i'm writing articles at uh, thankful to plants these days and i'm making these videos uh if you like uh, this video please like subscribe and share uh, thank you so much